Good evening, church. Glad to see you here tonight and glad you could be here to participate in our uh, worship service. And then shortly when this concludes, we'll go to our PM discussion groups where we're going to dive in and sort of explore uh, the text that we're going to uh, worship God with even now. Tonight, the topic is faith. As we explore from now until judgment, we're talking about different things that happen in your Christian development. And one of the most critical, the most fundamental is faith. The trick is in the world, there's a lot of definitions for faith. Uh, it's, maybe it's the most probable thing uh, would be one person's definition. Maybe it's a blind leap in the dark and you just uh, hope for the best uh, in faith. What's critical for us is that we open up our Bibles and we see how God defines faith uh, because it's incredibly important to him, for sure. Hebrews chapter 11 is one of those amazing chapters, and you may know that it's called sort of the, the hall of faith, the chapter of faith. It starts off in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, saying, now faith is the substance, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You skip down just a little bit further in verse 6. It says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we start getting this idea just from those two verses in this one chapter, how critical faith is in the life of a Christian. If you flip over to Romans chapter 5, just briefly, at the beginning of it, it says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of the Lord. Four verses, you can't miss it. The writers of the Bible want us to understand how important faith is in our development, but of course with that comes all kinds of questions. What is faith, Bible faith, and, and how does it function, and when does it begin, and, and how do we sort of unpack it? Because the more you read these narratives in the Bible, we unfurl different details about it. How many times did Jesus say to his disciples, O ye of little faith, O ye of little faith? And what about that other moment when he was healing the centurion's servant and, and the guy was talking about his, uh, uh, his authority and he just had to speak the words and Jesus says that he had not seen such great faith in all of Israel. And between those two accounts, O ye of little faith, and I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel, we see that the quality of faith is important. It's not just having it, but what quality of faith do we work to develop pretty important aspect of it for sure especially when it's impossible to please god without it and especially when we are justified by our faith especially when we look through so many scriptures time and time again even the most famous of them john three sixteen: for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life the bible uses words like believe uh, to represent faith in a lot of ways. And so tonight what I want us to do is to go back to one of those characters mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, and it mentions so, so many, from Abel to Noah to Abraham to Sarah. It mentions Jacob. Uh, it, it mentions so many characters that were just men and women of faith. Rahab is mentioned. Uh, Barak is mentioned. Uh, Samuel, Samson are mentioned. And there's even some that are unnamed, but it's people that remain faithful to God despite incredible poverty and hardships and suffering. And the world doesn't know their names, but they did immense things for the cause of the Lord because their faith was so strong and pointed to Him. They're recognized in Hebrews 11. I want us to go to Genesis chapter 6 so we can sort of unpack faith. And we're going to go to Genesis 6 because it tends to be a rather well-known story. But I recognize that not everyone may know the account of Noah. And so I, and some of you may be going, how is that possible? But we're not going to judge people on that because I've met several people who've never heard the story. And if this is the first time that you do hear about Noah, what a blessing that you are able to hear it tonight at this time. And you can see uh, faith and understand faith in a way that you may not have before. Let's see what the Bible unpacks with faith. Hebrews 11, Noah is recognized for his faith. Let's look real quick at the story of Noah in Genesis chapter 6. 
What I would like for us to do is start here. Verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only on evil continually. I mean, how disappointing must this have been for God? He created mankind in his image. We were created in a very special way that was distinct from all of the rest of creation. We were in the image of God. We were supposed to be people that carried out the, the thoughts of God, the actions of God, the attributes of God. And yet what has happened over these years leading up to this moment is that mankind has made a choice to reject God and push him away because instead of giving their heart and their lives to God, they gave it over entirely to evil. They rejected him completely. And because of this, God is going to bring judgment on the earth. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I've made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark. God's then going to go on and give him the details of how to build the ark. How long, how wide, how tall, what substances to make it out of, how to construct it, how many levels, how many doors, how many windows. All the details that Noah would need, God speaks to him. Because God tells him that he's going to send a flood. Verse 17, behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die but I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive. He goes and gives him the details of it. And then verse uh, 22, so beautiful, thus Noah did. According to all that God commanded him, so he did. My friends, that is faith. Think about what he had to do. Picture yourself at this point where Noah is, he's got this information coming from God and we know a couple things about him. He's a just man, but interestingly enough, it describes him as a man who walked with God. Now, that's not the first time in the Bible we've heard that terminology. If you go back to Genesis chapter five, Enoch, if you remember, he lived 365 years. He walked with God and then God took him up. This is a distinction that is made of a person who lives in a very close relationship with God. Noah walked with God. He knew God, and God knew him. So when this moment comes and where the earth is going to be destroyed, and rightly so, justly, for judgment has come on the wicked, God is going to protect Noah because he's a righteous man, a man of faith, a man dedicated to God. And so he communicates to him, what he needed to know. And that's our first aspect of faith, knowing. You gotta know. And Noah knew God. He listened to the commands of God. When God said, build an ark, and here's all the details that you need to build the ark, he knew exactly what he had to do. And think about that for a moment. He'd never seen floods like this before. He'd never seen a structure built like this ark before. There'd never been a gathering of animals in the way that God's asking him to do this. There's never been such a judgment on the earth as what's about to unfold. But Noah knew it was God that was speaking and it was God he was listening to and he knew exactly what he had to do because God, the one true God, the God who cannot lie, the God who is always faithful to his people, he is speaking. On top of that, he had to believe. It isn't just about the knowing, it's also about the believing. We touched on that a little bit this morning. And if you recall back in Luke chapter 4 is where we were this morning, there was a, the account of where Jesus had gone to Nazareth in the synagogue. And he reads a scroll and the people don't believe that he's the Christ and they reject him. And they're full of wrath and they're trying to kill him. They want to cast him off a cliff. They don't believe. They knew the scriptures. They had the scriptures. They were reading them in the synagogue, but they did not believe. 
And so they rejected Jesus. Now, what's interesting in the next passage, when he goes into Capernaum, he's going into the synagogues and teaching. And here we find once again, a certain uh, being knew exactly who he was. It was a demon. A demon had possessed a man. And when he sees him, he says, what do you have to do with me, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. He knew, but it's not faith because he didn't believe in Jesus. He wasn't living a life to trust in Jesus. There's a distinction that was made. It's more than just knowing you've got to believe in God and not just believe you've got to trust in him. Those are the bridges between knowledge and obedience to believe and to trust. And that is exactly what Noah did. Having never seen a flood of this scale and never built a structure like God has uh, asked him to do with just his family to do it. And with every other person on the face of the earth turned against God, one man chose by faith to obey God and do all, all that God had commanded. Not a little bit, not what was convenient, not what suited him for the day, but all that God had commanded. He knew what God had said. He knew the character of God. He believed in what God was going to do. He trusted it enough to make the choices that he was going to put his life in the hands of God, that he was going to build that ship and he was going to make the choice to put his family on it. Because if God says that's how you are saved, then that is exactly how you are saved and there will be no other way. Faith. And that led to obedience, knowledge, belief, the trust, the obedience, critical. In this one story, as we close out here and get ready for our discussion groups, we can see that Noah was a man of faith, incredible faith. How blessed are we? How blessed are we to be people of faith? All these ones that are mentioned in Hebrews 11 are noted because of the victories they had in life for their faith. And they stand as a testament and example for us. Many of the things they went through, other people had never gone through before, but they believed God once they knew what he wanted, and they trusted in him, and they chose to follow him and obey. We are so blessed because we have their example. And on top of their example, we have collected the entirety of all the people of faith in this Bible. We have exactly what God wants us to know in our Bibles And we know by example we can trust it. And time and time and time again, throughout all the history of mankind, we see how God has been faithful to deliver his people and keep his promises. We are truly blessed people. The same faith that they had is offered to us. And the path has been made even easier for us because we have their experiences to build on. God is so gracious to us. What will you do with your faith? How will you develop your faith? How will you care about the quality of your faith? So it's never said to you, O ye of little faith. But on judgment day, Jesus can look at you and say, such great faith, such great faith that you have have given to my kingdom. That's our goal. Tonight when we go to our groups, let's dive into that. You may have questions. You may have comments. You may have wisdom to contribute. Please do. Please do. But tonight, if there's a way that we can help you in your faith, Let's take care of it. If there's a way that you need to say, David, please, elders, please, church, please help me grow in my faith. That is a a, a wonderful question. That is a wonderful thing to request. And what else is the church for, man, to be there for you, to help you develop in your faith? We'll do it. We'll love to do it. We'll do it based on God's word. If there's a way we can help you tonight, please come forward as we stand and as we sing.